Hey sweet friends, welcome back. Today we are wrapping up my master bedroom makeover with part two, as well as kicking off my spring decorating series. Now, if you are new, my name is Amy and welcome to Simply Our Home. Here on my channel, I love to share with you decor shop with me's and hauls, DIY projects for your home, as well as decorating series. And in those, I take you room to room in our home as I refresh the spaces for that season. So if that sounds like something that you would enjoy, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button. And if you happen to miss part one, I'll go ahead and have that here at the end so you can catch up. As far as today, we have lots of decorating to do. We have some artwork and window treatments to hang. We have new bedding to put on. We have lots of tabletop surfaces to create spring vignettes. And I'll be revealing a new mirror that I have been anxiously awaiting. So if you are looking forward to this whole complete master bedroom reveal, definitely keep on watching. Give me a big thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. We have lots to do. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so if you remember, this is how we ended part one of our bedroom makeover. And today it is finally time to bring it all together. Starting out this morning, I'm going to be adding a new art piece above our bed that I shared with you in a recent spring Hobby Lobby shop with me and haul. The quickest and easiest way that I find to hang an art piece is to mark the center of the wall, then take a piece of painter's tape, stretch it along the back of your art piece, mark where the placement of your nails need to be, then find the center of the art piece, remove the tape and take it back to the wall, matching up the center points of the wall and your art piece. Level the markings. Hammer in your wall hooks or nails depending on if you have a stud or not. Here I'm using monkey hooks which I love since I don't have a stud. The hole is super small and I can hold up to 100 pounds depending on the strength that you get. Next remove the tape, hang your art piece and voila you're done. Today I'll also be adding new curtain panels that I got off of Amazon. These are a thicker linen texture and color, but before I can get them hung, they have quite a bit of wrinkles so a quick ironing is much needed. Now these curtains came at a great price. They come as a set of two panels with grommets. What I particularly like about them is the length and color of the grommets. They are 90 inches, which should allow them to just hover the ground without puddling. And the grommets are an antique bronze color, which will coordinate really well with our bronze curtain rods. For me, I love the look of curtains in addition to the Roman shades. Even though we won't be pulling them shut for privacy or room darkening purposes, I still think that it draws your eye upward, making the ceiling look much taller, and it also adds softness and a subtle elegance to a room. But before I start hanging the curtains, I'm going to first vacuum the wood dust from the windows that was left behind when Scott installed the new shades. Also, I think it's a perfect time to go ahead and clean the windows while the curtains are down and all the decor is out of my way. Plus, I can actually get a jump start on some of my spring cleaning as well. You'll have to let me know if you've already did some spring cleaning or do you actually wait till it is spring. One tip I constantly use when I'm cleaning our windows, which I've shared in the past, but if you're new, I'd like to just pass this along so maybe it can help save you some time and frustration with those pesky streaks. So the tip is to wipe your windows vertically on the inside, and then when you clean them on the outside, go horizontal. And of course, 
you could definitely do this vice versa. But by doing this, you're going to know exactly which side of the window to actually go back and rewash to eliminate those streaks. So definitely next time, if you don't already do this, try it and see if it helps. Also, let me know down in the comments if you have any other time-saving cleaning tips that you'd be willing to share. Because although I love a clean home, I don't love the time it takes to keep it that way. Now that cleaning is checked off the list, we can move on to hanging the curtains. Your best move to achieve the look of a taller ceiling is to make sure you hang your rod as high as you can. That is typically about eight inches above the window frame, or in our case, I believe it's only two and a half inches below the ceiling. Now, as far as the width, I like to go four to six inches beyond the sides of the window. That way you'll have enough room during the day to stack back the curtains to the side to reveal the entire window. This allows the maximum amount of light to filter into the room as well. All these little details can really make a huge difference in making your rooms feel larger. As I am looking at this, one thing that is bothering me is the mounting bracket for the rod. So what I think I'm going to do is take one of the grommets and place it on the outside of the bracket to conceal it. That way it is hidden. Plus, if we ever pull the panels together, they would be secured on the ends too. Although in March, here in West Virginia, our weather can be crazy as can be, 70s one day and snowing the next. I'm opting to change out our fleece sheets to a crisp, fresh white set, but there'll be no need to worry because I'm going to have tons of layers to make our bed super cozy. So all these layers definitely will provide us with a little warmth if we need it on an occasional unseasonably cold night that could happen to arise. Now, one of these layers happens to be this new Casaluna quilt that I am super excited to get in place. I love the creamy neutral color and subtle texture. It's going to be a perfect neutral base that I can build upon each season. To layer at the bottom of the bed, I'm coming in with this white cotton duvet cover set that I ordered from Target's website. I love its frilly ruffle border on both the duvet and the shams, and I think it will add a light, bright, cottagey feel. Now, I did a lot of research on the easiest way to insert the duvet insert into the duvet cover, and so this is what I found to work the easiest. The first step is to turn your duvet cover inside out, straightening all the edges and corners. I like to have my buttons or the opening to the insert at the foot of the bed. Also, I try to make sure all the corner ties are visible and easily accessible. Next, add your duvet cover. Make sure that it is lined up evenly with all the edges and corners of the duvet. It's super important to have the same size insert and cover. Too big and you'll end up with lumps and bumps. Too small and you'll end up with corners and edges looking very flat and saggy. Now, moving along, you'll notice that all four corners of the duvet insert typically will have a loop. So you're going to take the strings at the corner of the insert to secure and tie them together. I like to use a bow instead of a knot so that when I want to wash the duvet cover, it's easier to remove. Now moving right along, it's time to flip the cover right side in, shaking or rolling the cover down over the insert which should now be tucked away inside the cover. 
Once that is nice and straight on your bed, you'll just flip up the bottom to reveal the buttons, button that up to keep everything nice and secure. And there you have it. That is how I find it easiest to put in an insert into your duvet cover. To finish it up, I'm going to accordion fold it to lay across the foot of the bed for a super cozy designer look and feel. Now to my favorite part, which is adding all of the pillows. I mean, can you ever have too many? <laughs> First, I'll add the matching pillow shams to the white duvet. I like to kind of angle them up against the headboard to just give a more dramatic look to the bed. Then I'll add these beautiful two gingham checkered sage pillows and also this long lumbar pillow with tassels to bring in more color and texture to the bed. Both of these were from Target. And then I promise the last layer that I'll be adding to the bed is this gorgeous end of the bed throw from the Threshold brand at Target to bring in that beautiful shade of sage green to just tie all the things together, the new paint color and the artwork above the bed. Now that the bedding is finished, a quick spritz with this room spray by Hearth and Hand and we can move on to decorating some tabletop surfaces for spring. As far as our nightstands go, I like to keep the decor pretty minimal, adding just a few decorative pieces, normally in groups of three. I found this really pretty glass trinket box from the Target Dollar Spot, so I think I'll add that along with the room spray, and then I'll come in with this fluted utensil crock from Kirkland's to add a warm wooden element. And then I'll pop in some of these real feel tulips from Amazon, which are my favorite florals for spring. For Scott's nightstand, I found this really unique looking bud vase in the floral section at Hobby Lobby. It's $11.99, but you can get this half off when all of their florals are discounted. But instead of using it this way, I thought it would be really cool to remove the glass vial and place a taper candle inside. Then to add a bit of extra storage for small items that could be in his pockets like change, pens, and maybe keys, I'm adding this decorative book box also from Hobby Lobby and his glasses, and that will be all for his side of the bed. Popping over to our dresser, I'm going to be adding this age vessel along with four greenery picks that I picked up from Target. Now this will add a lot of height and draw your eye upwards. Also to the side, I'm adding a table clock. I thought this would complement the room as well as be a functional decor piece. For the center, I'm adding a stack of these linen covered storage boxes from Target. I love that I can open them up, have extra storage, maybe for jewelry, especially for this top one. It has sectioned items. I think that would be perfect for bracelets, earrings, or even rings. And I love the fact that the color coordinates so well with the curtains. Next, to the opposite side, I'm bringing in a wooden element with this really unique candle holder that I found from TJ Maxx on clearance. I'm also going to be adding that same swirled taper candle that I had over on Scott's nightstand to create a bit of uniformity in the room. I do typically stay away from real candles so you could absolutely use battery powered ones but for just that ambient lighting and a bit of romance I'm going to go ahead and light these. I'm also using this wick trimmer that came as a set from Amazon. I'll go ahead and place that in front as a functional decor piece and go ahead and light these and step back and let you look. Now you're going to see that I intentionally made or created triangles. The base of this candle holder matches very well with our wooden blinds as well as the base of the vessel. You're also going to see an inverted triangle in the placement of the linen boxes and clock with the curtains. 
all of these angles and shapes really help to create lots of interest and uniformity in your vignettes. For the last tabletop surface that we'll decorate together today, it's over on our chest of drawers. I'm adding a picture easel from Southern Living at Home and a beautiful scenic canvas print from Hobby Lobby. To create a grouping of three, I'm coming in with two pottery pieces also from Hobby Lobby. And I think this whole vignette came together so pretty and it's so simple and easy. The baby's breath that I'm adding to the lower vase is from Walmart and I kind of wish that I had a couple more of those to place inside to make it look a little bit more full and lush but for now I think it looks just fine. Friends, it is finally time to reveal the new mirror that I've anxiously been awaiting. It is from Urban Outfitters and I just love the arch black wooden frame and I think it fits the space perfectly and it just instantly pulls the look and feel of the room together. Just one final thing, this Gypsophilia tree from Target I think looks gorgeous. Here in this spot it kind of matches the greenery that's over in the aged vessel and we are pretty much done. I'm going to grab my vacuum and tidy up and then I will give you a complete look and reveal of our master bedroom spring makeover. All right, friends, well, that wraps up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed part two of our master bedroom makeover. I absolutely love how it turned out, and I am so excited as this is the kickoff to my spring decorating series. I'm ready to get out all the tulips and lavender and lots of greenery, so definitely be back next time because there'll be lots more decorating for spring to come. Now, before we end our time together, you know how I love to share with you a daily Bible verse. So go ahead, grab your Bibles, or you can look here to the side of the screen and we can read along together. So today I'll be reading from Psalm 146 verses two through five. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes and mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is in God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Well, friends, again, I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed and got some inspiration and motivation to do some spring decorating or even some spring cleaning in your homes. If you did, go ahead, give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you real soon in my next one. Take care and God bless friends. Bye.